Thank you for joining me. My name's Esther, but you might know me better as Mongoose Paints. If you follow me on Instagram, then you'll be familiar with my painting style. But a lot of you have asked if I would help you to start on your painting journey too. So in this series, I'll be showing you some of the materials I use and a few little tips and tricks to get you going. So today I'm going to show you how to do a few different techniques of brushwork using watercolours. We're going to start with a quite a wide brush. Now you've got some choices here because we could start with just making the, the page very very wet and what's great about this is because it's watercolour paper it can absorb that uh, water and it makes the paint do some really interesting things. If I just load up my brush here you can see that where I've put the paint it then spreads which means that if you um, load up that wet area, it will give a nice sort of cloudy um, look to it, which makes skies and seascapes a real joy to be able to paint. Now I'm going to leave that to dry because as we see it dry, you'll notice some other things happening to that paint. But the other things we can do, obviously, are painting straight onto dry paper. Now, if you really load your brush up with wet paint, you'll get a really nice, even coat. But as the brush dries, you'll notice that the paint gives more texture. Obviously it gets paler. So really with one color of paint on your brush, you can get quite an array of shades. And they'll just disappear to nothing. I quite like this because what I tend to do is I'll, watercolor, uh, I'll water my paint down quite a lot because I like to build on the colour because by doing that you can add shape to something. So for example if I was to let's make this round, so I'm painting just a round ball. Now here obviously the paint's quite even all over but as that dries we'll be able to add more uh, intensity to the colours around it to add, uh, to give it form. So we'll just add that there and we'll just watch that and see how that dries. Now you'll see here that the cloudy part has already started to dry and I don't know if the camera pick, can pick it up but where I, the paint has come to the edge, let me see if I can bring the paper to you a little bit more, where the paint has come to the edge of the wet area, it's actually given a little darker waterline um, sort of sharp edge there. Whereas here, where I didn't get the paint spread right to the edge of the wet area, it's given a very soft, smudgy edge. And I like both of those techniques for different things. I think that the uh, the hard line gives just a really cool um sort of definition to things but this soft soft area basically means you've just done a cloud and you didn't even try so that's pretty cool isn't it now that's all with quite a large brush obviously if you use quite a thin brush like this just load that up with some paint this is where you can really get the details in because you can do some really lovely fine lines here like the stamens of a flower maybe And again, depending on how wet your brush is or how much paint you've loaded on, will give you either a very, very dark line or very, very light line. So here is my very thick line. Now, if I put the paint there and add lots of water to it, then obviously this line is going to be fainter. And you could add even more water to it. and your line will be even fainter again. So this is what I really, I just love about watercolour because you're using basically the colour of your paper to help mix your colours. Now another thing that you can do with this, um, like I say, you can build up colour, but what you can't do is you can't cover. So if you've started off with a dark colour, you can't cover it. Now often, um, 
with other types of painting, it always says to start with the darkest colours and build to light, which is completely correct if you're using an opaque paint. But this paint is very, very sheer. So if you wanted to um, paint a scene, for example, you would definitely start with the lightest, lightest colours, maybe even, you know, use the paper, leave blank areas. Those are your lightest areas and build up the shadows and do your darkest colours um, last. So you can see that this ball shape is starting to uh, to dry there. So let's add a bit of shading to that now and start to build this up. I want to give it a really nice dark edge here. Now that's quite nice with the shadow. I like that, that's great. But what we didn't leave is a light patch and that's when your sponge can come in handy. All you have to do is make it wet because remember watercolour always dissolves in water so even if it's completely dry you can lift it off the page by re-wetting it. And instantly there we've got three tones haven't we? We've got the, the lightest shade which basically is where we've lifted the paint off the paper. We've got the mid-tone which is just the first colour that we mixed and then we've built it and got this darker tone there which has given it shadow. Obviously this is a very simple explanation of this but you can build on that and add more gradients between um, to give more form to your shape but that's the basic principle. So with like I said with the wet on wet um, you get the very soft edges and with the wet on dry you get the much sharper edges which is quite handy if you were for example painting a house because if you were doing that you could even do just little tiny bricks in, on your house. Very very simple to get that obviously you do them a bit more carefully than I have here but very simple to get that shape and if they're a bit haphazard, it'll just give to the cottagey feel. You can, you know, do them odd. Some cottages will have suddenly a random white brick or a black brick in there. You can really add some personality to your to your shapes. And that's why having a variety of different brushes is quite nice. I like the round brushes for when I'm doing things like flowers or foliage. And I like the sharper edged ones for when I'm doing something a bit more structural. So I hope that's helped you to just think about um, sort of the basic fundamentals of brushwork. But why don't we have a little go at uh, painting something now? So what I'm going to do here, yeah, sorry, mix my paint too, mix my paint too thickly there, but I want something in a mid-tone. We'll stick with our blues, but obviously you can use whatever you like. Now, if we wanted to do, say, a petal, we could paint a petal shape here add some add some blue to it to build that up let's let that start to dry there but we could do one next to it again this is a very quick sketch so you can take your time with it a bit more you can add some there, we want that to sort of come down a bit, but have some graduation. And then maybe have some here, but they're, they're a bit shortened because we want to give some perspective, don't we? So give them a slightly different, slightly different shape, thinking about what angle we're looking at them. Now, what would be really nice is if we could add some stamens to the middle of this flower. I'm sorry, it's slightly off the screen there, isn't it? There we go. So we want to add some stamens to this. Now, obviously, these are still very, very wet. So if I loaded up this brush with my darker colour or stronger colour that I wanted to do, and I painted some stamens, they're just going to bleed right into the 
the wet paint there which might be an effect that you want but it's not really what we want here so what you would do once you're happy with how you've built up your petals you're happy with the um the amount of paint that you've added to the wetness there you'd let that completely dry and you'd add the really detailed parts later so let's leave that to dry and uh, I will finish that little little portion in a second while that's drying let's have a go at another 3d shape so this time I'm thinking what I'd like to do is a cube so the front of my cube is going to be here, rough square shape and obviously we all used to draw these at school didn't we you want the sides going off like this so if we did all this one colour it wouldn't really look like much would it so what we need to do is think about where is the light coming from now I'm thinking that what I want to happen is for the light to be coming from this direction so it's going to be hitting maybe this corner um, first. So that means that this side is going to be pretty much in shadow. So let's go ahead and build up that side with a bit darker bit of that blue. So you can see that's starting to take shape. Obviously again it's very wet so we'll add in our sharp corners later on. And what's nice about that is these colours will slightly blur together which will give a nice overall form but when we add some sharp detail it will really bring it bring it to life there now this the top half is going to be in light as well but we just want to give it a little bit of form there maybe give this just some just ground it a little bit on the on the floor so we're going to keep building that up and building that up until it looks like a cube. I'll just do that sped up now and, uh, and we'll look at it in a second. OK, so I've nearly finished this, the shadowing on this cube and you can see that the top is the lightest part. Here is the medium and here is the darkest. Now, what you'll also notice accidentally on purpose is that my darkest has started to bleed into my lightest that's okay don't panic about that because using just a damp not a wet but a damp brush we can just blend that and almost make it a raise what you need to remember is that watercolor is is very you know has a lot of movement in it so nothing is ever going to be really precise with watercolor and that's one of the joys of it but you can definitely hide and blend mistakes and make them just part of the uh part of the the drawing so i've neatened that up there now i think that looks kind of cubish but maybe the other thing that it, it needs is just a little bit of grounding so then we can do we can just give it a shadow so remember the light's coming from here so the shadow is going to be around this area and by giving it just a little shadow is suddenly not um not just floating it's actually sitting on something and that's what you can do with all things that you're painting even waves will have a slight shadow and by put, putting those in you'll just ground your picture and make it look a bit more real. So I'm hoping that this is now dry enough that we could add our stamens in. Let's have a little look. So I'll load my brush, like I said we want quite a thick heavy paint on there. These brushes hold hardly anything so we want it to be as dark as possible so that we can add our detailing. Maybe add a little bit of some pollen on the end. There we go. I mean, it's not much. It's not a detailed flower, but you can see that it is starting to look a bit like something. And these can be as, you know, as irregular or as regular as you want them to be. You've definitely got something starting to appear and you've got some depth in it and that's all just using one color that's all we've used so far is just one color now what would happen 
if we were to let's go to a bigger brush so I can make a nice wet area if we make this area wet like this nice and soggy and we'll get some more of our paint remember how we put it there it bleeds it starts to bleed into the uh, the wet area so we'll let that happen there but you don't just have to stick to the one colour what if I was to put this side some nice pink and that will blend in that side and where they start to join they'll gradually morph and make a third colour and you can even slightly help them if you want to and that's a really nice technique for doing flower petals because you know flowers are, are so diverse aren't they the colors can change from one from the tip of the petal down to the stamens you can have a variety of colors in there so i really like this technique because it means i don't have to mix the perfect mid-tone they create it themselves just by joining together so i hope that's been helpful and um, if you have any questions please feel free to send me a message but otherwise uh, join me next week where we're going to spend a little bit more time um, on skies and some water so I hope to see you then. Bye.